in this video, we're going to take a look at methods of proof. So we're going to take a look here at three different methods of proof. The first one being proof by exhaustion. Then we'll take a look at disproof by counterexample. And then finally, we'll take a look at proof by deduction. So we take a look here at proof by exhaustion. We've got this question that says prove by exhaustion that no square number ends in seven. So how do we answer this question here? Well, for proof by exhaustion, the clue is kind of in the name. We simply exhaust all possible cases. Now, if we're looking to show that no square number ends in seven, then the first thing that you might think here would be to write down all square numbers, okay? But obviously we have a bit of an issue with that because we have an infinite number of square numbers. So we need to think about a different way that we can exhaust all the possible cases here. So let's just start by writing down the first few square numbers, okay? So if I've got one squared, that would give us one. If I've got two squared, that would give us four. Three squared would give us nine. We're looking at what the number ends in here. Okay, so for the next number now, or my next square number, we'll have two digits. So we're looking at the last digit here. So four squared is 16. We're looking at these numbers here. So I've got one, four, nine. So this last digit here is six. Keep going, we've got five squared. That would give us 25. Six squared is 36. And what you might hopefully recognize here we're going to hopefully show that there's a bit of a pattern with this. So let's keep going for now. 7 squared is 49. 8 squared is 64. 9 squared is 81. And 10 squared is 100. Okay. Now, if we just take a look at each of these um, final digits here, or the last digit of each of these square numbers, so I've got 5. We've got six, we've got nine, we've got four, one, and zero. Okay. Now you don't have to go on to 11 squared here, but if I just show it for now, 11 squared, well, that would give me 121. Okay. So again, notice my last digit here doesn't end in a seven. If you go through 12 squared now, so 12 squared, that would give us 144. And what you can see then is this pattern's going to repeat now. Okay. 13 squared. That's 169. So notice this pattern just repeats now. 1, 4, 9, so 1, 4, 9. This would keep going. We've got 1, 1 there, 4, over there, this 9 here, and this 9 here. And this would keep repeating. Okay, so notice here now for this pattern, we've got 1, 4, 9, 6, 5, 6, 9, 4, 1, and 0. Okay. And like we said here, this will just keep repeating now. Okay. So what this shows then is by exhaustion that no square number can end in seven. Okay. So therefore what we say then is no square number. No square number ends in seven. As this pattern just keeps uh, repeating. Okay. We just say that this pattern keeps repeating and keeps repeating and seven never occurs. Okay. And there we have it. So that's all we really need to say there. We do want to give this final conclusion here just to, you know, kind of illustrate what we found and what we were looking to show. Okay. So there we have it. So, like you can see for a proof by exhaustion, usually there is, you know, I don't want to say a lot of work, but we have to show all the possible cases here, which is what we've done. And we've just shown that it keeps repeating. Okay. So like I said, give this final conclusion here and there we have it. So that's the solution there. And that's the first method of proof there, proof by exhaustion. Moving on to the next method of proof now where we have disproof by counterexample. So disproof by counterexample is a method of proof where a statement is shown to be incorrect or false. And the way that we do that is by finding a single example where the statement is not true. You can see that here with this question. It says prove that the following statement is not true. And then the statement here is all prime numbers are odd. Now be slightly careful here with this question. We're not looking to show that all prime numbers are odd. What we're looking to show is that this statement here, all prime numbers are odd, is not true. So again, 
Notice the emphasis here on not. Okay. So if we think about this statement for a moment, all prime numbers are odd. Intuitively, I think that sounds quite sensible. Okay, because if we think about it, even numbers will always be a multiple of two. Okay. But we do have a slight issue here in that the actual number itself, two, is actually prime. Okay. So in that case, then, two is our counterexample here. So two is a counterexample. So two is a counterexample the statement. Let's write this down here. So basically, all we were trying to do here is just find one example to disprove this statement. And we've done that here. So 2 is a counterexample to the statement, as 2 is a prime number. So 2 is a prime number. But 2 is even rather than odd. rather than odd. And there we have it. So for this question here, the only counterexample was actually two itself. Okay, two is the only even prime number. Other than that, all the other prime numbers are indeed odd. Okay. Like we said, that was the only possible counterexample here. Like we said, all you need to do is just give this brief statement here, um, just de detailing basically that two is a prime number, but two is even rather than odd. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution to that example for disproof by counterexample. What we're going to do now is just move on to the final method of proof here, which is proof by deduction. And finally, moving on to the very last method of proof here, we've got proof by deduction. So proof by deduction is a method of proof where a statement is shown to be true using well-established mathematical principles. Now, this is very similar to what you covered in GCSE math for the proof type questions. So hopefully it should be nice and straightforward. So we've got this question here that says proof that x squared minus 6x plus 12 is positive for all values of x. So to begin with here, I'm just going to write down the quadratic that we're working with. So x squared minus 6x plus 12. Now in this form here, there's not much we can do with this. Okay. What we simply want to do here is show that it's positive for all values of x. But like we said, in this form here, there's not much we can do. Okay. So what I'm going to do Take this quadratic here and rewrite this. The way that I'm going to rewrite this is by completing the square. So we begin here by completing the square. Let's make a note of that here. That we're going to complete the square. Like so. Then completing the square on this quadratic here, we're going to get x minus 3. We get x minus 3 all squared. We then square this value here, but take the negative of that. So minus 3 squared would be 9. Take the negative of that, we get minus 9. And don't forget the plus 12 here. So now if we simplify this here, we're going to get our complete square form. That would give me x minus 3 all squared. Then minus 9 plus 12, that would give me positive 3. Okay. Like we said, working with the quadratic in this form here, there wasn't much we could do with that. However, once we get it into completed square form like we've got here, then we can hopefully recognize a few things about this. So hopefully what you might notice here is x minus 3 all squared. Well, this will always be greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So in other words, it's going to be 0 or positive. And the reason for that is because it doesn't matter what value of x I substitute into this bracket here, so if I put 1 in, for example, I get 1 minus 3, so that would be minus 2. But because we square it, that would be positive, okay? If I was to put 3 in, we'd get 3 minus 3, which is 0, or 0 squared, which is 0. Okay, so like you can see, it will always be greater than or equal to 0. So let's just know that here. So x minus 3 all squared will be greater than or equal to 0. I'm just going to do that free and here. It will be greater than or equal to zero as we square the expression. Write that down here. And then because we add a positive number to it here, because we add three to x minus three all squared, 
like we said, this will always be greater than or equal to zero. So no matter what, because I add another positive number to this here, then it means this quadratic here will be positive for all values of x. Okay. So then we add three. Which we'll note here is a positive number. So therefore, what we can say then is x squared minus 6x plus 12 is positive for all values of x. Okay? Positive for all values of x. And there we have it. That gives us our solution there. Okay? Like well, you can see, nothing too challenging. It's just establishing some basic facts. So we're going to complete the square, put into completed square form, and then just using these basic facts here. Okay? But there we have it. So that gives the solution to the final method of proof, therefore proof by deduction. And that brings the end of this video on methods of proof. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at exam revision for algebraic methods.